Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly and the Chicago trial and federal Brooklyn appeal. So in today's podcast, we're going to be exploring your views relating to how the trial is going down so far. I know a lot of people are feeling that the injustices of what is taking place in Judge Lennon Weber's courtroom in Chicago is very biased and one-sided to the um, to the people who are feeling the defense is not guilty. And I get that. Um, so I want to read a clip that CNN reported. And I want us to chat about that, you know. Uh, today, I definitely want us to get deeper into that. Um, it feels as though we're resurrecting old information. The only twist is that there is the um, obstruction. And that is what the jury is going to be instructed on regarding R. Kelly to make sure that beyond a reasonable doubt, none of these people were obstructed against were threatened, were given fear, uh, like mafia type fear. I'm gonna break your fingers. I'm gonna, you know, to make sure that, you know, everything is as the victims or witnesses state. So I give a shout out to all my Kelly Nation supporters here, Fancy Face. Frankie and Johnny, um, Timothy Flowers. If I miss anyone, please, I will put it in the chat. <laughs> I will put it in the comment box. Um, and Blue Bunny Gamer Girls, um, Ray Johnson, even though he's always late. <laughs> um, Jerlita, and so many more. So many more. I'll keep doing this as I, April, as I extend my conversation. My mind is everywhere right now. Our prayers go out to Robert Sylvester Kelly in this trying time for him. You know, there was once a time where he had an extremely trying time. And it was when he was getting his vocal surgery. That was very fearful. That was a time that I, in my mind, before everything turned out okay, I'm going to tell you, I had a little small, you know, fear that, of course, something would mess up with the vocals. But he came back stronger and he came back more powerful after the surgery. And I believe that this will also be a victorious time for Robert. Um, people don't know what the jury is going to deliberate on. It's going to take some time, at least four weeks um, or under four weeks. That's the max. So I want you to put your mind at ease at that and just pay attention and observe the actions of the jury not of the judge. The judge is only going to do a certain portion of what he's going to do. So he's only going to instruct the jurors on how to apply the law. Now, if it's something that is derogatory, if it's something that is, you know, in in faming, uh, like, fame, you, you know, taking away the fame of the reality of the situation, they're going to recognize that. Von Jean is in there with the demons. They're going to sort this thing out. And the jury is just the angel sitting on the sideline making, you know, whatever rational decisions they should be making. That's why I went over the American Bar Association information for you. If you don't know how juries work, please go back two to three videos and 
All the rules and guidelines and regulations from the American Bar Association are there. Anything that is not involved in that list of rules and regulations can be appealed upon. So that's given us hope. That's given us hope. So here we go. CNN came out with an update. 5.43 p.m. Wednesday, August the 17th. Today is the 18th. This information comes so fast. It's so hard for me to keep up <laughs> along with, you know, putting and uploading and all that. So please forgive me for being a day behind. But we're talking about it. Singer R. Kelly leaves the Layton Criminal Courts building following a hearing on June 26, 2019 in Chicago. That's the picture. So CNN today, the girl allegedly seen in multiple child pornography tapes from the late 1990s having sex with R. Kelly is expected to testify. The singer had sex with her when she was 14 and recorded some of their hundreds of sexual encounters. Prosecutors said at the state, at the start of Kelly, um, at the start of Kelly, at the start of Kelly's uh, trial and two associates Chicago federal trial Wednesday. The tapes showing the alleged encounters were part of a 2008 Illinois child trial in which Kelly was acquitted after the witnesses declined to take the stand. Now nearly 40 years old, this is a final expected testimony from the pseudonym Jane, Assistant U.S. Attorney Jason Julian, during his opening statement said, Jane is going to testify. Jane is going to tell you that it's her on the videos. Julian told jurors that it's Kelly on the video having sex with her. Kelly faces charges. He sexually abused five minors in the late 1990s and created multiple explicit videos with four of them. The charges also include producing and receiving pornography, enticing minors to engage in sex activity and obstruction charges. Two of his former associates are co-defendants. Daryl McDavid was Kelly's formal, former business manager and accountant and faces child pornography and obstruction charges. Milton June Brown, was Kelly's former assistant and faces one count of conspiracy to receive child pornography. Kelly, McDavid, and Brown each pleaded not guilty to the charges. Okay. Kelly's attorney, Jennifer Bonjean, asked jurors to question why Jane is coming forward now to testify that the tapes show Kelly having sex with her when she was underage contradicting what she told authorities decades ago. For the last 22 years, she has been adamantly denying that it was her in that video. Before there was any criminal investigation, she denied it. She denied it repeatedly to prosecutors. She denied it to social workers, to police officers. She denied it under oath to a grand jury, Bonjean said. Prosecutors are expected to show multiple tapes of child pornography allegedly involving Kelly having sex with underage girls. Stop. We're going to stop there for the moment. I feel like this. If you are able to promote child pornography within a courtroom, you don't know what effect. This is going to have upon the innocence of those 12 jurors that are coming forth to solve some type of crime. What if that is a seed induced within their own psyche to begin to be curious about child pornography? Point in question, you have a child that is in, in the house or in the studio while someone is communicating on child pornography. 
That child does not understand what those words mean. That child is going to be enticed. A seed is going to be planted to get them to go and at least look the words up, look the terminology up. This is why I say this is not for children. The R. Kelly Appeal TV channel is not for kids. So there should be no children with uh, videos with, or a parent with videos of kids on their channel coming to R. Kelly Appeal TV. They should create their channel that is adult, that is made for adults because of the enticement. Okay. And so we have to be very mindful of how we express sexuality to people, including people under pressure. Maybe they've always had their own idea of that. And to present it like that is like watching a movie. Is that not doing the same thing as promoting child pornography in any other sense of the word? I mean, think about it. This woman had all these years, all these years to come forth and Bonjean is on it. That's why I say I have multi, I, I have ultimate faith that everything is going to turn out victorious in this situation. It's not going to be like it was in the federal trial where it's just nobody has a say on the defense side. Okay. The public and media will not be permitted to view the tapes as they are considered contraband. <laughs> but jurors will. These are the people we're talking about. So you impress 12 individuals to look at something sexual with a child. And you don't expect a seed to be planted in the minds of that person. Especially if they're weak, especially if they're sick, especially if they're ill and oppositional to the rules that society has created for situations such as child pornography. This young woman has a reason for coming forth at this moment in time. She should be responsible for the obstruction of justice because she lied blatantly. Now, I can see if she was illiterate and not know the meaning of the truth and a lie, but I'm sure that she knew. Isn't this the one who had the necklace and then the necklace disappeared. Isn't this the very one who said it was not her on the tape? So CNN says the videos are difficult to watch, Julian said, but it's important for you all to watch those videos to understand what happened. Why is it important, Julian? You're running a game. You're scamming the jurors. You're scamming because that's just the time of the season. It's the harvest. You know, we're moving into everything that spring has brought forth, that summer has created. Summer has stopped its growing process. And now it's time for the harvest. So Jillian is in that harvesting moment. He's trying to get a win. So to get a win, you would recreate something that has absolutely no necessary reason to be opened in society right now. It is not as though new young children have come forth with information and true evidence as of 2017 or beyond 
to specifically say that this needs to be re revisited. And this is why I believe it's going to be acquitted once again. Statute of limitations, even though they say they're not going to be able to use that and they're going to allow it in, believe me, you, these rules and laws that are being broken are only being broken so the victims and the witnesses will have their day to really and truly lay it out on the line, no matter how ridiculous they look in the end because of the fact that Bonjean is going to knock them down with the, but didn't you say, why are we to believe you today? You said this many years ago, many decades ago, that this didn't happen, that didn't happen. But today you are adamant. What is your purpose? What is your, what is your angle? <laughs> so before opening statements began yesterday, one juror was excused by U.S. District Judge Harry Lennon Weber due to medical issues. The jury is now made up of four men and eight women along with five alternates who were sworn in Tuesday. The trial in Kelly's hometown is the latest chapter in a series of legal battles the singer faces. Yeah, because you won't leave him be. You will not leave him be. Kelly was convicted of racketeering and sex trafficking charges at a Brooklyn federal trial in September and sentenced to 30 years in prison. So you're making it look really, really bad for him because you jumped the bandwagon for something that is being appealed right now that could possibly be overturned or new tried. And you threw that in before this so you could get double the time, if not double the time, at least some time. Because even if the federal Brooklyn trial is exonerated or uh, overturned or new trialed, guess what's going to happen? they're gonna have this to fall back on. So this is the reason why Donnelly chose to trump everything and jump into it on the bandwagon just to have something, anything on Robert. And me, myself personally, like I said, I'm an observer. I'm just observing this the way I would feel the jury would be looking at it, at least a few of them. You know, it just, it's, there's very, there's a lot of questions and there's no way I would put my life on the line to live with the guilt of charging a man for a crime that I'm not sure of. And I believe it's going to be more people unsure. I believe it's going to be more people unsure than at least four, at least four. Now, the Kelly's inner circle, according to CNN, both Milton Brown and Daryl McDavid began working with Kelly around the height of his career in the 90s. The three amigos. But when allegations began surfacing in 2001 that a tape had leaked showing Kelly having sex with the minor, prosecutors said the pair and others in Kelly's inner circle sprang into action. Kelly, Brown, and McDavid went through extraordinary lengths to get that tape back, Jillian said. But Adam Glosman, an attorney for McDavid, told jurors Kelly, Jane and her family were not truthful to McDavid and the team of high-powered entertainment lawyers and denied the recording show Kelly having sex with Jane when she was underage. See, this is what I'm saying, that it's just going to be putting it on the record to let it be known that this is what was done back in 2008, trying to resurrect something. Even the prosecutor is saying that, or, or the attorneys for McDavid is saying that she denied all this. That is perjury in its greatest event. What are you going to do with her when she comes to court and she tells you that it is her now on the tape? Are we expected to believe that? Are we expected to believe that as observers, supporters, as jurors? Are we expected to believe that? Knowing how prosecution lies 
They're not perfect. You're not perfect government in any way, shape or form. All right, let me get some water. <clears throat> mm, let me clear my throat. <laughs> we will show you everything he, McDavid, saw and everything he was told led him to believe that the tape was not legitimate. Glossman said because he believed that there was never any intention to obstruct justice or break the law, the only intention was to present the best defense possible. That defense team helped Kelly win his 2008 trial. Glossman said McDavid will take the stand at this trial to tell jurors what he did and did not do during that time and that he believed he was simply doing his job. In an opening statement, Kathleen Leon, an attorney for Brown, painted him as a small town high school dropout who was trying to break into the music industry and felt he hit the jackpot when he started working for Kelly as one of his assistants, an errand boy. Evidence will prove that he was just an assistant who day in and day out, for Leon said. He had no knowledge of the secrets of his employer, Robert Kelly, and what he held close and hidden from the world. He had no knowledge of any conspiracy and no knowledge that the individual portrayed in the tape was a minor. Disturbing videos of Jane. Prosecutors said Jane was a uh, was from a musical family. Her aunt, known professionally as Sparkle, signed a recording contract with Kelly. Jane's father played the guitar on several of Kelly's records. Kelly became Jane's family's only source of income, Jillian told jurors. Jane met Kelly when she was about 12 or 13 years old in the mid-90s and the singer eventually became her godfather. Kelly never became Jane's godfather in a religious sense, Julian said, but being Jane's godfather provided cover for spending time with her. Jane was around 13 or 14 when Kelly took um, her virginity, Julian said. Kelly was about 31. Kelly, well, how do they know? How do they know if she's lying, willing to get back on the stand and perjure herself? How do we know that they had sex? Now, this is something that was filed in the motion that uh, R. Kelly and Bongina is saying that you can't create the timeline. There is no way you can create the timeline. There's no pregnancy. There's no... Um, STD, there's no, um, you know, even a virginity test at that given time, because if it was, it would be on the docket. And I can't wait until this is all over to go back and review the 2008, um, proceeding because I want to see who the attorney was. I want to see why you know, these things weren't brought about if they were not brought about from the defense side, because that was a lot of information that probably acquitted him. So I believe it's probably on the docket. Kelly taught Jane what to do to please him. Kelly told Jane how to position her body during sex. How did they know this? What he wanted Jane to say to him during sex, Julian said. How do they know that? If she never presented um, evidence that this was her on the tape, how do they know all this? <laughs> See, this is how you can tell the devil in the details. They're throwing words into the equation. One thing Kelly and Jane discussed during sex was her age, Julian said. Really, how do they know that? Or is that on the tape? The tape that you know, can't really 100%, you know, verify that it is R. Kelly. I'm just curious. I mean, this is really going to be amazing to watch. 
Julian said jurors will see Kelly setting up a camcorder and adjusting it before having sex with Jane and offered disturbing descriptions of what the tapes show. And I'm sure that the conversation of what they're just saying on this as a quote from Kelly is going to be on the tape as well. That doesn't even show that it's him or not. Amazing. Prosecutor said Jane's story was not an outlier in Kelly's world, that he had sex with her underage friends as well, who were also expected to testify at trial. So if that's the case, and this is the situation, then I believe that someone in the music industry, if this is R. Kelly in this tape, and a forensic specialist can tell that that's him based upon, you know, uh, tattoos or whatever is in, indicative to R. Kelly, then I would have to say that it is so amazing and so set up, <clears throat> so amazing and so set up that literally this was a plan set up from the very beginning. Um, because I don't believe that he would have camcorded himself doing all this devastating stuff for it to eventually leak out. What if he lost his book bag? What if somebody found it and then all of a sudden all these ex all these tapes show up and people start watching them and it gets out that way? It's too much incriminating evidence. R. Kelly may be illiterate in some form, you know, under the intelligent quotient of America, but he's not in the mentally challenged area to the point where unless he wanted to get caught unless that's just what his goal was i'm gonna keep doing this until somebody catch me it could be because you got to remember videotaping was very normal taking pictures of people having sex in his home with his you know for, you know the people that went over to their house and he's walking past the bedroom that was normal Re solar coaster. You're going to see that that was normal. And I'm not justifying anything. I'm just saying that if he did do this, and if this was a part of his regime, and why he chose to do it, once this comes out as, you know, whatever it is, once again, people are going to have an image of their mind that it happened. You know, so if it were to have happened, I can literally see because it was so normal in his world. But I really and truly don't believe that he would be that naive enough because there would be so many more other videos, not just the depiction of other videos that looks like that was attached to from this one video. You know, but like we said, there are green screens. I've done videos with green screens that show you. I could be in London in the background, but I'm in my, in my home with a green screen. And it looks, Filmora can do wonderful film reproductions. So that could be the issue. I just want to clear the air and say that Jane, who is getting ready to testify on something that she's already stated, is going to be a conflict of interest for me because I feel that she is being coerced, if not lying on her own for her own benefit to get what it is she wants now. Whatever the justice is that she wants, all these years later, you've lived with it for this long. Now it's teaching people that you can go 40 years, you can lie to a system, come back as a victim, and re-record the story of your life. So unfair. So Robert, to you, my thing is to tell you to continue to hold your head high. Um, know that the stress that you're under has caused you 
to, you know, maybe doubt yourself, but there's no need to doubt. There's no need to doubt because of the experiences that you've gone through in your life, psychologically, for you to still have your right state of mind, you are blessed by the Most High. Okay? You are going to get through this. You are going to be amazing again. You are going to be the star that shines brightly regardless of the stars that are out there. The, the music industry has been droughted by your abilities to being able to come forth. I know the differences between R. Kelly and Rob. I know you were trying to go out into your own industry and make this life re resurrect from what the remnants of the thieves and the vultures and the haters took from you. And I know specifically that a lot of this is more about the royalties of that 900 million that Louis Farrakhan and you had that conversation with when he did his research on how much your royalties were. So just know that we know. We understand. And for those who don't understand, they're just haters because they want to have something, anything to break you down. That's the slave mentality, the in-house and the out-house slave. You were in the in-house. You were entertaining the king. You were doing the thing that they wish they could have done. And because now you're called out. Yeah, I saw it. Who was it? In the biblical story where, you know, the wife wanted this man so bad. He was a worker. Wanted him so bad. Her husband was a king, but she wanted the worker because of his muscles and because of what he could do. And she lied on him. And she said to her husband, he tried me. He tried to rape me. Put him in a dungeon. He's there for the rest of his life, supposedly. But when he got in there, what did this character do? This character turned around and started making miracles happen by telling fortunes and dreams to the point where the king had to bring him back out. Somehow or another, the truth came out. And guess what? The wife was looking crazy, just like Andrea Kelly. I'm sorry, I can't say that because of... Uh, um. Well, no, I'm going to say what I'm saying because it's all public knowledge. It's all social media. And like Robert told us, be very leery of social media. And I say this to you once again, be very mindful of what the media can portray right in front of our eyes to where it looks as though it is and it isn't. And yeah, it's very easy to get off on that. Um, because of the fact that it may be true, but you know, it could be some form of, uh, what is that? Um, where are you trying to hide something and, you know, you don't want the world to know. And so you manipulate that situation, but I don't think so, because other than that, it would have come out. It would have already come out. So just have hope for my Kelly Nation supporters here at R. Kelly Appeal TV know that Robert is expecting your prayers, your meditations, your your peaceful, you know, thoughts towards him so he can continually get through this because it is a mentally draining situation. And the draining of the mentality is something. That's why we have to be both mind, body, and spirit aligned. Someone mentioned that he's gained a little bit of weight. Okay. I'll love you when your hair turns gray. I'll love you if you gain a little weight. <laughs> so just as long as you stay who you are, Robert, no one cares about 
the physical appearance. It's just a vehicle. See, our body is the vehicle that our soul carries to be tangible in this physical existence. Just to remind us that we're human. That's it. So it's, it's all right. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm a big fine girl and I back that up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's okay how we see ourselves as long as we take that and acknowledge that that's what it is and keep it moving. Mind, body, and spirit. So don't let them take your mind, Robert. Don't let them take your mind, Robert Sylvester Kelly. That's what they're trying to do. And they're using the very closest things to you. So, I thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I'm not sure if I have one more thing to say that I have not spoken about. I don't believe so. So, what I'm going to do is continue to... Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to do. Hold on. Let me look on the docket to see if there's anything there today. Hold on. Okay. There's nothing there. As of August the 16th, there was a order and Vidor begins. Void Dire begins. So that's really nothing to really explain. Um, we do know what goes on there. And if you are interested in knowing what the vo Void Dire is, you can go back to the two videos on the playlist and it says Vordire. So, um, yeah, so we're all cut up here. We're all cut up. I can't believe we are. I can't believe we're all cut up because there's a lot of activity going on. But I tell you what, all the snakes are being inter, interwoven that's being pulled apart. The tar is coming off from beneath his feet. Thank God. Even if it's something we don't want to hear, it's being exposed. All the lies are being exposed so we can figure out the truth in between the two. Because one part there's 50%, no, 48% a lie, 48% the truth. And somewhere in between the 4%, we got to find what really went down. <laughs> so thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. We appreciate you. We value you here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. And we're going to be doing some creative things on the channel. So please hit the subscribe button so you can get the notifications that have conversations that only R. Kelly Appeal TV is bringing to the platform over here on YouTube. Thank you so much. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.